Hello, hello, lovely, lovely, lovelies. I haven't been on in a while. Um, so I thought I would just pop on here while I mess with this um, drawing that's in the works. As you can see, I have my blue line sketch underneath it and I am drawing on top. I am working on, it's a coloring book page for adult coloring book, and I am working in Clip Studio Paint and that's, I don't know how long I'm going to go tonight, um, but I want to at least put in a half hour, so, and I have nothing exciting to report, so, yeah. I will say that I am woefully unprepared for Christmas season and I cannot believe the year is almost over. Um, I just, I'm so behind on all the projects I wanted to get done. <laughs> I'm sure every, I don't know, maybe you're a super, maybe you're super and you are not behind on all your projects and you got everything accomplished for 2018 that you wanted. I, however, did not. I feel like the whole year has gone by in a blur of <sighs> freaking drama. Not my own, necessarily, but in the world. And it is distracting as hell. And I would just like the world to simmer down. Specifically, the world in this neck of the woods, not, I mean, you know, you, you know what I'm trying to say. It's been a cluster. It's been a cluster in this country for on all kinds of different levels. And I'm kind of exhausted. So I, I can't tune out news and stuff very easily. It really does affect me. And so, but anyway, it's always a great, the end of the year is always good to uh, set resolutions and goals that you won't complete. <laughs> and I have a big to-do list that I would like to get done next year. So we'll see. I don't know if I need this lip here on this. I keep drawing it in and then erasing it, and I don't think I want it. I was hoping this book would be done by now. I don't I don't know what drawing this is. I'm working on 30 pictures, and this one might be number 13 or 14. I don't remember. But other things keep getting in the way. I keep getting more and more work, and which is a good thing client work you know but um and these take longer than like a more simple illustration or a mandala I mean I'm I'm uh, mirroring these so it's not like I'm drawing I'm kind of saving time in the sense that you know as you can see I'm mirroring this but it's still I don't know why it's not as easy as the, well okay I know why when I was doing a mandala I mirror it in sections of like four six eight seven five whatever and so they're a lot faster, but this I'm having to do one half of an intricate drawing instead of like only a fourth of an intricate drawing. Um, so yeah, that makes sense, but. And I haven't been working on my adult comic. I haven't had a chance and I haven't been able to work on the Kitty Wars comic for my son either. So those are things that I need to get back on this year. Um, and then it, in January, some of you might follow me, um, who followed me for a while might know that I worked on the, you know, my comic was for the V100s and, um, comic book challenge. 
And in January, I'm going to be part of the second anthology. I was part of the first anthology, and I did a pinup. And in this one, I'm going to do a little four-page story with a bunch of other awesome artists who also did the 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge. And so I'm going to... I don't know. It's only four pages, which is good because hopefully I can manage four pages, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know if we're allowed to show the whole thing. So I'd like to stream or share part of it in videos, but I don't remember how much we're allowed to show. So I'll need to check on that. Um, so that's going to be fun. The theme is fantasy creatures. Um, most of us are doing, it's called werewolves and unicorns right now and I think most of us are doing werewolves and unicorns but there are some other um, it can also be just general fantasy stuff so uh, I am going to have a story with werewolves and unicorns or a werewolf and unicorns uh, so I think I submitted my idea and I, I I don't know I might change my mind but I don't think I'm going to um, I hate that leaf. I hate it. So I think I need to make it not so big. I mean, it needs to be long, but the maybe I need to make the ten, ten the uh, not the tentacles or the tendrils. What am I trying to say? The leaf segments. Let's see if I how far back did I go on here? There we go. Smaller. Anyway, so that'll be cool. And if, since it's only four pages hopefully it won't take up I'll be able to a finish it in a timely manner and b it won't take up so much time uh, that I continue to neglect the other projects I have going on I have some illustrations some editing work um, a lo logo design a couple logo designs and some other clerical stuff that I need to get done for and some website stuff I need to get done for people so I sort of like let's see how does that look plus my own personal projects like this and a couple other books oh and I decided because I'm insane so over Thanksgiving my um, my cousin recently moved to the state I'm living in and she and I were talking about my grandmother's recipes because she hosted Thanksgiving and made uh, one of the desserts my grandmother uh, was known for in our family. And she busted out a box of old recipes, handwritten recipes that my mother grandmother had collected, either written down herself or her lady friends had given her. And so, of course, what did I do? I said, you give me this box and I'm going to enter these all into the computer and then I'm going to bring the box back Christmas time and, and I will um, give copies of these recipes to all the girls in the family. And so one thing led to another. So I've been working on that and I thought it would be easy. <laughs> I thought it would be, oh, you guys, I thought it would be easy. Um, you know, I thought I was just going to be typing and I'm, I'm a quick typer and you know, no, because they're not really like, you know, they're half recipe, half some of them are more complete than others, and um, sometimes because these women, you know, this is all they did, they were housewives, they knew how to make all this stuff, and so they didn't write down all the steps. And I am not a 50s housewife, or I can cook, but, you know, I'm not, like, anything special. So a lot of this stuff I've never made or heard of some ingredients I've never heard of um, because they have old names or they're just not in vogue anymore or they're so anyway it, it was so this is I'm like spending because I got to get this done for Christmas and so I'm spending an inordinate amount of time an inordinate inordinate uh, amount of time on the internet researching these trying to find these recipes and so I could edit them in a way that uh, you know makes some sense if the you know, if my family members have never made them before, or of course I'm going to, um, I'm not, I'm, 
I'm going to all this trouble to do these recipes, you know, turn this into a book for my family, so I'm going to offer it for sale as well. I don't expect anybody to buy it, um, but, you know, I might as well. I'm already doing the work. So um, because I'm doing that, I need to, like, explain stuff because I'm sure there are other people out there that have no idea uh, what a lot of this stuff is, like me, um, and I don't know who would buy it and what kind of experience they would have. You know, because if I sell like 20 copies of it or whatever, who knows if those 20 copies of those 20 people know anything like, you know, so I'm suddenly like editing, like transcribing and editing an entire cookbook. And I have to, I was going to make print copies for everybody, but there's no way I'm going to have it print ready in time. So I'm just going to make a PDF and an ebook version and um, cause I don't know which ones, which ladies in my family have read on Kindles or whatever I do. I read everything digital. I read it actually on my phone. Um, or if they've got tablets or if they just need it on a PDF for their, their computer or laptop, whatever. And then I'm like in contact with my mother, like every day calling her, do you remember grand Nan making this recipe? And you know, of course she doesn't remember it or or do you know what this ingredient is? Or is this what I think it says with her handwriting? Or, um, um, and then, you know, she's going to be finding some old pictures of my grandmother for me and stuff. So it's just suddenly like it's become this huge time suck that I wasn't expecting. So yeah, that was stupid of me. Um, but I think, I, you know, it'll be fine. I just, I've been trying to really, um, it's stupid of me trying to do it by Christmas, but that's all right. I don't know if I like these leaves or not. Let's see. Sometimes I forget that these leaves are only one tiny piece of a very large, intricate drawing. Well, it's not super large. You know, it's eight and a half by 11, but I mean, there's going to be so much crap on this page that I don't necessarily need to. Nobody's going to maybe out of this entire thing, look at that leaf and say, oh my God, that's not a perfect leaf because there's going to be so much other stuff vying for their attention, right? So I need to remind myself to just get a move on with these leaves and yeah. So there were some surprising things um, in the cookbook so far. I don't know if you guys are interested in cooking at all, if you like cooking, but one of the things that really surprised me was, oh, the other thing is because I'm vegan or mostly vegan. Um, I can't test a lot of these recipes <laughs> personally. I could, but, and I might, but, um, because you know, they're all, they all either have meat or cheese or so much butter. Oh my gosh, so much butter. And, um, what was I trying to say here? I'm not tasting them. Oh, so although the desserts I might try because my husband, he's itching for, he's not vegan. He's itching for me to try these things. And he's like, I, so I was putting in a strawberry cheesecake recipe and my husband was like, oh my God, it's been so long since I've had cheesecake. So I might, you know, make some of them. Um, and then once the book's done, I might try to veganize some of them. But anyway, um, and this thing had like the weirdest instructions. It said that I had to heat my preheat the oven to 500 degrees I thought 500 degrees for a cheesecake you know when I'm first writing it down this is cast to be a typo so see I called my mom and she was like no that's you know that does that looks like her handwriting that looks like 500 degrees like you think and then so we googled it and apparently there's a specific type of cheesecake called New York cheesecake that most people don't make or I've never heard anybody make it and, it, and you do it, you cook it at 500 degrees Fahrenheit for like 15 minutes and then you drop the temperature way down. And so it's stuff like that, that, um, cause she of course didn't indicate on the card that it was any kind of special cheesecake and she's from Jersey. So maybe it's just everybody there was already, that's what was regionally everybody was making, but, um, well, she's from England, but she moved to New Jersey when my grandfather brought her home from England in the war. But so it's like, you know, I, that's the kind of thing I go down these rabbit holes of like, can you make a cheesecake? I have never cooked anything at 500 degrees because the, the universal baking temperature is 350. And, you know, sometimes you go a little bit higher than that. But 
you know, or if you're doing like a, you know, a frozen pizza or something, you go up to 450, but 500 for a cheesecake, which is, you know, I'm thinking, what the heck? So yeah, so that's the kind of rabbit holes I've been going down. And I learned all about jello molds, uh, salads, because I've never had one in my life. I've never made one. So that was yesterday's rabbit hole. And you know, it's just funny. It's and I so and I'm looking like the one the recipe and I so the ones that I'm having trouble with I set to the side. There's some crazy things like there's this. I had to learn about like this special kind of yeast for these cookies that I had never heard about. Um, that you can only get in a few stores because they're not carried. This kind of active wet yeast isn't actually carried in most places across the country. So. I had to figure out what, how much dry yeast to substitute for it because nobody cooks with that anymore. Just, I mean, and then I had to do the math. So I couldn't do the math. So I had to call my mom. I was like, mom, help me, uh, help me with this math. There's a table and it has fractions and d things on it and it's scary and ounces and yeah. So, so that's the kind of thing I've been doing. And, um, I'm not not enjoying it. I actually think it's really cool. And I really like talking to my mom about all this stuff. I just, um, I'm just stressed out because I've got, a, I got, too, I think I've, I've got too much on my plate and Christmas is coming up and, and I feel like I'm like really behind on all my projects and yeah, so I am really behind on all my projects, but you know, I didn't need to be chewing. I didn't need to decide to do this book, I guess is the thing. <laughs> so, so that was silly of me. That was very silly of me. Um, and it doesn't help that this is the Karen confession hour, I guess. It doesn't help that we seem to have skipped fall here in the upper Midwest and, um, the Great Lakes area. I'm near a Great Lake. And so it's all cloudy all the time already. It's like rain, snow, wintry mix, crap, gray, gray skies. And I get the seasonal effective, you know, and I just want to sleep. I just want to hibernate like a bear in the woods. And um, so that's not helping matters. Not helping. So uh, I'm bummed because usually we have a bit more fall weather before, but it's been really cold. November has been extra cold here. And I don't know if it's been that way for you guys too, but it's been extra cold and gray. So I grew up out in Colorado mostly. And I really, it's just this time of year that I really miss out West because we got nice sun out, even after a snow, you know, it would snow for a couple days and then it would be bright and sunny again. Like it wouldn't be like a week of unrelenting gray. It's like you, it's like living in Forks, Washington in a freaking twilight book, right? Um, because it's so gray here. So what did I do up here? So I decided to make that less geometric, but down here I'm making it more geometric. Well, pooey. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I feel like, you know, if there were sp sparkly vampires could live here in the winter because it's not very sunny very often. So I heard that it was the 10th anniversary of Twilight today, I think. And I don't know about you guys, but I freaking loved the Twilight books. So I know there are many that disagree and there are th millions of people who do agree with me because Stephanie Meyer cleaned up, but, and, but um, I don't know if I like this here, but I, so I don't know if I, I've read them. I don't know if I wanted, would want, I've seen the movies, I've read the books a couple times. 
don't know if I want to reread them again right now, though. I'm thinking maybe I should reread them in honor of the anniversary, but then I'm like, oh, no, I don't need to this year. <laughs> maybe when they hit like 20 or 25 years old, I might revisit. But, you know, I also like, and this is going to make a lot of my a lot of my online friends groan, but I also liked the um, Fifty Shades books a lot. So, so yeah, there's something about me that is controversial. Seen the movies, read the books, really enjoyed them. Um, I, I. I think the Twilight books are better written than the Fifty Shades of Grey books as far as just like prose skill goes. But I think, you know, the thing that both of those series were able to pull off was the, and clearly it's not just me because they sold millions and millions and millions of copies, right? That they really tapped into, um, their emotional storytelling is really good. Their actual storytelling is really good. Maybe not their writing from like an academic literary standpoint. You know, I could, you could debate me on that. Um, but from a storytelling standpoint of just telling a good story that people connect to and fall in love with the characters, really good. Clearly. So... I always take umbrage when people trash. I'm not sure I'm liking this. I always take umbrage when people trash the books. Um, because on a, for a liter, you know, and say, oh, they suck. I'm like, well, do they really suck? What constitutes suckage in your mind? Do you think they suck because you don't like that kind of book? It's not to your taste. Do you measure suckage by some kind of literary merit? Do you measure, what do you measure success by? Do you measure success by the enjoyment that it gives the people who read it? Or do you measure success by accolades given and awards won by academics or critics? I mean, I feel like, I don't know, I, I have like picked those books apart and not like from a literary standpoint, but I really, when I read those books, I really try to see what it is that moves people to love them so much. But I like genre fiction. I'm not a literary. I in college I was all into literary short fiction and I was going to go to I was going to go to um I was going to go to grad school for creative writing and all this crap. And I'm so not into that anymore. <laughs> so not into that. I I love genre fiction, sci-fi, fantasy, romance. I don't like anything that's literary. It's just, I don't have patience for that anymore. I just like good stories. And, um, I mean, and not that I think genre fiction is shit writing. I think genre fiction has got tons of amazing writers that I could only dream about being as good as, but, um, yeah, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I just, I was just thinking about this today when I saw that if it is true that that was the 10 year anniversary of Twilight, I was just thinking about it. Although it seems like it would be longer than that. So I don't know what, what tweet, what the tweet was that I saw and I'm too tired to go back and look it up. But, but I, I always think about this every time I see, because it inevitably brings out the critics, like somebody, maybe it was 10 years of the, for the movie because this, the person on Twitter um, had then posted like, you know, let's, here's a good vampire movie. And so of course that always gets me thinking about this, like, cause you had to slam it, didn't you? You just had to slam it. You, you, you just had to. So, I mean, I, I read the books and I see the flaws. I see the flaws. 
And don't even get me started on the third, on the last book. Like there was some shit in the last book that went down that I was infuriated about. Infuriated. Oh, and I thought it was the worst of the worst of the Twilight series. Specifically, Renesme and what? Oh, okay. Yeah, don't even get me started. Don't even get me started. So it's not that I don't have like critiques of the series myself, <clears throat> but you know, I'm still a fan. So there's that. <laughs> There's that. Confessions of a middle-aged woman who wasn't quite middle-aged when the books came out. I was a lot younger, so I was uh, inching up towards middle-aged when the Fifty Shades books came out, but I just, you know, I think it's that whole thing about whenever you're writing any kind of story, right? It doesn't matter whether it's for a comic or a novel or a movie or whatever, the main characters always have to be completely ridiculously obsessed and passionate about something, some kind of goal. And for them to work for, you know, to work through it and whether that's just surviving because the bad guys are after you or saving the world or getting the girl or whatever. And in those books, um, Twilight and Fifty Shades. Uh, the, you know, the two, the hero, of course, they're based on it. Like Fifty Shades is started out as a fan fiction of Twilight, right? So it's nothing like Twilight, but you can see the, you can see the origins of it in the characters and, but, um, you know, how she drew the characters in the situation and their personality types and everything else. So, but in both of those cases, the emotional need of the characters for each other is so fraught and over the top and so obsessive. And so, you know, it, mo a lot of romances are like that, which is why I like romance. Um, because I'm a girl and I like romance. <laughs> um, but, and everybody was like, was complaining about how Twilight is a bad uh, example of, you know, Bella shouldn't just want to be a, ma it, you know, she just wants to turn into a vampire and live with Edward forever. Well, yeah. I mean, technically that's not really a good feminist outcome. And I am a feminist, so I get it. But I also was a teen girl. And freaking, I remember when you were like had a crush on a guy. You didn't care about. I mean, well, I guess some girls are better than I was, but I I had my goals and stuff. But the one thing I really cared about was the boy that I had a crush on at the time. Right. So. I think, I think we forget that a lot of people are like, you know, when you're a teenager, everything is life and death. And so, and your romances are so big, they're bigger than life and your crushes. Oh my God. It's exhausting thinking about it now. So I felt it was accurate. You know, I felt, and that's why so many teen girls loved it. So, I don't know. I mean, not every teen girl and boy is obsessed with, like, dating and stuff. And not every book has to be, not every YA book or should be about some kind of romance and obnoxious love triangle. But there's a reason that stuff sells. There's a reason they put that stuff in everything. So, we can't help ourselves. We love it. We love it. I I don't like any books that don't deal with romance. That don't have any kind of romance in them at all. I just, ugh. I have to have something. I have to have some kind of romantic subplot. If it's not the main plot, I need some kind of uh, romance going on. Or it's not something that will stick with me, I guess. I think about all my favorites uh, 
um, all my favorites, every single one of my favorite books. And I'll, I'll go back to the old ones, you know, the ones that I read. And I used to read more fantasy than sci-fi. I'm finding, I always liked sci-fi and fantasy, but I used to read a crap, just pretty much like I was a fantasy reader. But, um, and some sci-fi, depending on what it was. Like, I didn't like hard sci-fi, forget that. But, so, like, one of my all-time favorite authors is Anne McCaffrey. And in every one of, like, so the Dragon Rider series, oh, my God. Like, I wanted to be Anne McCaffrey when I grew up, right? That was my wish. So, but in every one of those, like, in the very first book, it, even though it wasn't, like, overstated and it wasn't, like, a huge part of every book, it was always a subplot going on in every single one. There was Lessa and Falar, there was Brooke and Fenor. You know, every single book, there was a little bit of romance in it. She also wrote romance novels. And then, um, in her, in her Crystal Singer series, there was romance. Um, and in the, there was romance with Jackson and Shara. And I mean, every single one, there was a love story and they all got together. Um, then there was, um, what else am I, what else did I, oh, I loved the Belgariad series. Oh my God. And that like whole thing was the prophecy was like hooking people up left and right as rewards. <laughs> so there, you know, and that was a huge, that even became part of the, um, that even became part of how they solved the problem at the end because love, you know, in a lot of stories, love is love equals the force of good. Love conquers all, right? So, so I loved those. I'm trying to think some of the others. Oh, even in Lord of the Rings. I mean, you would argue, of course, there was uh, Aragorn and what's her bucket. And, um, oh God, Aragorn and Not, you know, Liv Tyler. But what was her name? I'm old. And then there was Gal Galadriel had a freaking, the dwarf ha hankering after her. And that chick from uh, Rohan, she was in love with uh, Aragorn, but then settled for, uh, what was his name? Boromir's brother Faramir, right? Did they hook up? I think they did. So there was like love even in those, even though we only had a couple of characters that were female and they ended up... And there was even love of a non-sexual kind between Frodo and Sam. Like, that was the ultimate love story right there. Even though it was of a platonic... I'm assuming it was of the platonic love between two men that is like... They're like brothers, men-at-arms, you know, not not biological brothers. But that that devotion that Sam had to Frodo. So, you know... That's not a romantic love, but so yes, I have to have love in my stories. I don't know about you. Maybe you're different. I know that the, I've read. I, I just I know some people don't care for it. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm stereotyping, but I don't know if like a lot of. I think it's probably with guys that you know. There's like lots of guys that just like hard sci-fi that doesn't have like a romantic interest or like a hard military story maybe that doesn't have a romantic interest in it but um so that might be generalized that maybe I'm generalizing on that but you know I can't tell you how many times I've read the Belgariad and the Dragon Rider series and uh, the Lord of the Rings. I just can't even. So many times. I used to reread the um, I used to make it a point to reread the Lord of the Rings trilogy every year. Every single year. I don't really reread my books as much as I used to. 
But I think part of that is, remember now, I'm old. I'm going to be, in a few years, I'll be 50. I'm in my late 40s here. So back in the day, there wasn't as much media out there. There wasn't as many movies. I didn't have cable growing up. I, even though it was available, I lived up in the mountains and we couldn't get it. Um, unless I was visiting relatives who had it. Um, I didn't have a lot of disposable income to read a lot of books, so I had to check things out from the library. And I don't think there was many books out there, maybe, as there are now. And certainly, I mean, well, there aren't. Okay, certainly not now with the advent of um, independent publishing and ebooks. And let me tell you, I read a lot of ebooks uh, by independent authors. Uh, right now, and usually they're trying. <laughs> Sometimes they are suspect in quality, and sometimes they're very, very good. And I just, I can't afford to have a Kindle subscription every month. So I usually do it like once or twice a year, and I like, I read really fast. So I usually will, I'll read everything by the authors that I know and like, and catch up to all their current stuff. Because most of these independent authors, um, very prolific, very prolific. So what I usually do is I read everything they've got and then um, in the month you can borrow up to 10 books at a time but then if you want to have more than 10 books in a month you have to return so you can't keep them on your phone or your device you have to return them and so I um, I like download 10 books I go through them really fast and then uh, pardon me after the month is up I have to unsubscribe I, I had it going for a while. Some of the, I, I sell some stuff on Amazon and, and, um, if that right now that's paying for prime and some other stuff, but if I end up selling more, I'll probably keep my Amazon, my Kindle unlimited membership, but, um, eventually, but so right now what I do is I, I like, like I, like I do with Netflix when I find a show, I like, you know, I binge read, I binge read a series and then I cancel my subscription um, and then I wait a couple months until I start seeing notifications from my favorite authors and I've seen like there's several books out. So then I go and I, uh, re-up it and then I download every, you know, and then I start binging again. So I've, uh, since I, right before Thanksgiving, on, before we drove down, no, on Thanksgiving, the night before Thanksgiving, I re-up my membership and I think I've, I'm already into like, I've already read 15 books or something. So um, but I was traveling and you know, there was long car rides and, um, so yeah, so I've caught up on the authors I follow, all of their current new releases, and now I'm going to, well, not all of them, I would say, but the ones that I was like, Ooh, I really need to catch up. Um, so then I'll go find the rest of the ones that are on Kindle Unlimited because not everybody's on Kindle Unlimited that I read. So, uh, and then I will... Just keep reading for my 30 days as much as I can and then I'll um I'll just I'll cancel it and then I'll do it all over again later in a couple more, you know, in like half so I'll do it like twice a year probably. So so I read a lot. I read I read more than I watch TV. I'm one of those people. I don't sit and watch TV. I'm either watching YouTube videos, podcasts, or like how-to videos on subjects I'm interested in. I used to watch a lot of, um, I used to watch a lot, I like to watch a lot of documentaries, especially like crazy ass ones about like conspiracy alien theories and shit like that. But I haven't been doing that as much lately. So I just, the, the most TV I've watched recently is, I still haven't watched the third Netflix season of Daredevil and I'm so pissed that they canceled it because it was such a good show. Oh my God. I'm so bummed about that. Um, and I watched Stranger Things and I just, we just watched, um, last month we watched The Haunting of Hill House, which was excellent. If you haven't binged that yet, you must. Um, I do have a few opinions about the last episode, but, um, so, I, but that's it. I don't really watch, and I was obsessed with Korean, um, 
dramas and I still love them, but I become way too obsessed. As you can tell by my habits, I, I binge things and then that's all I end up watching. I just, I can't watch my Korean dramas and read the subtitles at the same time and work, which, so I haven't been, I only do that if I'm like doing a project with my hands, like knitting where I don't really need to watch what I'm doing. I can't sit and draw and watch a Korean drama because clearly I can't draw and read subtitles at the same time. So I haven't been watching those, but I love them so, 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 so much. So, but yes, I read, I read more probably and historically have read more than I, I hate this leaf. I'm going to delete it. Then I watch television. So you're just like learning all kinds of stuff about me tonight as I ramble. If you're actually watching this and you find it somewhat interesting, I, <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with you. Uh, anyway, so I'm wondering, where is my list of crap that I need to get done? Is it this? Yes. <sighs> Book cover, logo. Oh yeah, I gotta do that. Yeah. Some of this stuff, I got more that I haven't put on this list. This was just stuff I, tr I needed to get done in the short term. And I don't know, I don't know what to do to try to make next year more productive. Um, I want to get a lot accomplished next year. I don't know what, if you guys have any big plans for 2019. I'm hoping I'll start seeing your videos, um, like when I'm browsing around on all my friends, my art friends and stuff, I'm hoping I'll see what you guys are going to be up to in 2019. And if you have any like game plans or anything that I can be inspired by. So I don't know what to do down here with this. What am I, what should I do here? What should I do? What should I do? Anyway, um, if I had like drawn this, if I hadn't just sketched, I just sketched the shape and the ideas of what I was going to see here. It is turned up. I just, I just sketched the idea. This has got a lot of leaves. I just wanted the leaves to make the shapes and I didn't really fill in details and so some of the transitions between elements um, is awkward plus I didn't want them to be I wanted to be like let I've got a lot of stylized stuff on here like in these main motifs so I didn't want to make it um, like up here it's more stylized so I wanted to keep the leaves more stylized throughout and not that any of this I haven't drawn anything realistic in this so far it's it's always it's my interpretation of like a classic damask or damask I don't know how you say that pattern with modern zen tangle doodle art stylization if this freaking stream has been going the entire time and I have been had the microphone muted I'm gonna laugh my ass off let me just check oh no I <laughs> okay I just I you guys know that I'm prone to do that and so oh my word um the other problem to my plate my productivity has been at late night anyway is that I have been playing too many video games I got into um at Thanksgiving my cut my nephew who's going to graduate from high school soon. He, um, he got me into his old version of Skyrim Elder Scrolls five. And so, um, the, yeah, that was, that's a problem because, uh, back in the old days, I used to play a lot of final fantasy games. Um, before I quit playing video games when my son was little, because I didn't want him to play, you know, video games for a couple, until he was older. 
Yeah. So that's like a total time suck of a game right there. Oh, I don't think, let's make this like here. So that also has been taking my, that's a fun game. I don't know if any of you guys like uh, role-playing games. That, that one's pretty outstanding, I have to say. And I haven't been playing it. I could be playing it a heck of a lot more, but I've been trying really hard not to um, binge on it because I, you know, you turn that thing on and then like four hours later, you like look up from it and you're like, holy crap, I've been on this way too long. Um, so, um, yeah, that's a great, I was like, I'm just kind of blown away at the complexity of that game. I, he told me that he thinks they're coming out with a new one. I am also interested in Red Dead Redemption, blah, 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 whatever. But I haven't got it. And I know that for my Christmas present, I have um, the new Spyro game has already been ordered by my husband. So it's just, it's sitting in a package waiting for Christmas to happen because he ordered it early. So I'm excited about that because I played the original Spyro before, like the very first Spyro the Dragon, I played that game. And um, so I wanted to, I wanted to get this. So I know that was what I asked for for Christmas, and so he got it for me. But So it's just sitting there taunting me in the Amazon packaging. Um, so he also, I had never, even though I had watched my friends play some of the Halo games, I had never played them myself. And so I don't know if that, well, anyway, so he had me, we were like, he was showing me Halo and we were playing it together on a dual screen. That was pretty amusing. The old one, the were like an old ass one where the graphics weren't, you know, for the time they were cutting edge, but now they're pfft. so yeah, I'm just, so that's also been kind of bad as I'm starting to get back into my, into playing games. Cause I used to be a really big video game player. And then of course, star Wars battlefront up, updated with the Geonosis, uh, crap this weekend. So I spent way too much time. That was amazing. I have to say that, um, I mean, I don't think like the gameplay or anything was like super groundbreaking or anything, but that freaking world, the, the graphics in that game is just like, I could just sit there and I often do, you know, I'm a, sometimes I just am a freaking like tourist. <laughs> Sometimes I wish there was just, I wish that they had some in that game. I really wish they would just let you run around and, um, like in non, in first, just like in non, non battle royale mode or whatever, where it's just you and a first player and, and you just had an access to the world maps and you could just wander around on the world maps and not actually play anything. You could just like, you know, just like a sightseeing thing, just to just freaking admire how good their world creation was. And to feel like you're in the movie, right? Because, uh, so like as a total fan, you're too busy freaking trying to stay alive to actually always enjoy the level you're on. Um, and I would love to just wander around and it's really inspiring. It's really inspiring to be in Tatooine. It's really inspiring as a fan to be, I, I would just love it if they would have some kind of game mode where it was just, just wander around mode. You don't have to do anything. You just wander around. And maybe you could unlock it or something. I, I remember in the old games, there was lots of things you could... The old... um, You'd get bonus content. Like, I used to love the um, Tony Hawk. Uh, I used to have all the Tony Hawk games. I used to play those. Oh, my God. <sighs> and there was, like, bonus levels and shit you could unlock for gameplay. I wish they had something like that. I don't know. Right now it just seems like it's all like I'm finally used to the Battle Royale gameplay but I'm still and I get the addiction to it because it's exciting and sort of like you know gives you that adrenaline rush but it's sort of monotonous after a while, right? Because 
once you like level up and you get all the gear and there's nothing else to do except run around and try to beat your own personal scores and there's not even any place where it keeps your personal scores like so for me right now my goal is I try to make at least 30 eliminations per because you know I'm really new to this first person shooter battle royale style so my personal goal now is I'm usually on top of the leader like you know in the top 10 of the leaderboard and I try to get at least 30 eliminations on every level that I'm on and I get pissed if I don't but there's no like there's no like um, scoring or um, that I know of that you can't like keep track of that gameplay like or that you can't keep track of your own personal records right so in the battle royale mode so for me or, or how many times you've been on top of the leaderboard or anything like that or um, I finally started I was I was coming in second and third a lot but I finally am starting to get first some more on top of the leaderboard and um, so now um, at least with the troopers because with the with the heroes and villains I'm still I could level them up by playing in the um, the heroes and villains um, I don't know if you guys play this game but I could go into where the heroes and villains game mode and I could level them up, but I'm trying to do it only in Galactic Assault, really. I, I go in there a little bit, heroes and villains, but I don't really like it. I don't like that game mode. So I only like to get them in heroes, I mean in Galactic Assault, and so then I only level them up in there, so I'm behind on that. Because they're usually being hogged by everybody else, so you don't get them very often. Um, I finally got... Obi-Wan Kenobi was just released, so I finally started getting him a few more times. But I suck with him right now. Because <laughs> he has no star cards. Anyway, whatever. The point, what I was, I don't even know what my point was. Oh, so like, yeah. So like, with Battle Royale games, at some point now, it's just, you know, I'm trying to consistently hit 30 kills or more on every class that I'm using. Um, and I don't always, because A, I might be having a bad day, or B, my team might suck freaking ass. And, like, so there's nothing I can do. If my team is sucking ass and we don't get to play all the stages of the match, um, or rather, I should say, the other team is so ridiculously good, right? Because, <laughs> um, I shouldn't be bitching about my other, but sometimes I swear to God, come on, people. All you have to do, listen. If you're trying to play capture the flag mode and the area is contested and you want to keep it going so you don't lose, all you have to do is freaking run onto the into the middle where the flag quote unquote flag is and it'll immediately switch from losing to contested even if you freaking die two seconds later. So for the good of the team, don't hover around like a freaking scaredy cat on the edges. Run there and there and put it to contested. <laughs> My God, it's not like you're going to respawn in two seconds anyway. So, oh, it drives me nuts. Yeah, so. So, yeah, so on, so I both, I get it, like, I kind of get bored sometimes when I'm, like, in a slower gameplay mode because I'm, I've gotten used to that adrenaline rush now of the first-person multi-shooter game. But at the same time, when you only have like the same freaking battles over and over and over again, and with you've used up, you've leveled up all your guys, and you've gotten all the guns, and they haven't released any new weapons or any new skins, and there's nothing to play for, then you have to start inventing your own challenges. And so right now, that's perhaps you guys are way better than me, and 30 eliminations is nothing. But, um,. It took me a while to get consistently to, and I don't always get them. I'm usually like 20 and above in most games now. Um, I think my highest was 60 something in a match. That match went on like ridiculously long. Um, we were in overtime. Like, like I think people, the highest guys on my team were like scoring a hundred eliminations in that, in that, in that match. And I was like in the top, I don't know, I was like seventh or some ridiculousness. And I had like 66 or eight or whatever it was. So, so yeah, that was like out, that was like cray cray. That was super crazy. But 
Yes. So that's my pathetic gaming story. I'm sure like I could freaking game. I could find any kind of streamers on YouTube and Twitch that would just blow me out of the water. But I, I feel like it's, I've done pretty good for just having never really grown up with this kind of game. And it's like really my first time with, with it. So, and I don't know, I don't know that I would like other, I don't know if I would like other first person shooters like that though. Like I can't stand watching my kid play Fortnite. Fortnite just seems absolutely ridiculous to me. I have no interest in it whatsoever. Um, he keeps saying, Hey mom, I'll teach you how to play Fortnite. And I'm just like, uh, like I get why they like it, but I don't like, it's not, I don't like the way, I don't like the way that you run around and you just like build crap. It's like a cross between like, you know, one of these first person shooters in Minecraft, but then you don't even have a material. You just like suddenly build a freaking wall at a, like with a swing of an ax or something. It's like, I don't know. I just don't like, I guess I like the realism of like the closer realism of the Star Wars Battlefront or other stuff like that. Then um, there were some first person shooter games I've played on the old systems that were not multiplayer that were very more realistic. There was like this one that I just loved. I still need to figure out if I can find out what it was called, but it was like this World War II game where you were this, uh, guy like infiltrating different um nazi bases and shit and that was a fantastic game i wonder if i wonder if that battlefield game that's out right now is sort of like that i'll have to look into it um so i just i can't i just can't get into i just can't get into fortnite i wonder what the actual like game because that's just what the free online battle royale mode I wonder what the game game is like I suggested we get that for my son for I know he wants it so that might be coming I might get to see that if we get it for Christmas for him or if somebody gets it because I think that's on his list but um where you know the actual I think where you actually have to fight against whatever's in the storm and and I mean I get that they I get why the kids love it. The characters are designs are great. And I mean, but if it was just running around shooting stuff, I maybe would like, I don't like the building aspect of it. I just think it's silly and you don't get to keep any of your crap. Like when you're dead, you have to, it's gone, right? You don't have an inventory that you keep. I don't know. It's just, who am I to judge? I can't make this, I can't make this line uh, nice and smooth. So I'm going to bust out the curve ruler here. It's because I'm streaming. I can't get these lines good. So I've been streaming for an hour now and I've just completely rambled. And so woe, woe is you if you actually stayed and listened to this. Um, I appreciate it, but <laughs> I'm sure... I've come across as crazy as usual. But yeah, if you have any comments, if you have any thoughts about anything, I said leave it in the comments below. That would be awesome. And once I get some of these client stuff off my plate, hopefully I will stream some more. And I'll find out if I can stream during the 100 days. I think, because I think last time we were supposed to keep it kind of like on the down low, like we weren't supposed to show everything on our social media stuff. So I don't know if that's that rule. Cause you know, until the book was up, until somebody bought the book or backed the book, cause it was kickstarted, we weren't supposed to give the whole thing away, which I get. So um. all right. I don't know why I'm obsessing with this. I'm sorry. So yeah, so I'm going to sign off and if you thought that this, uh, me just completely rambling about whatever topic came to my head was fun, let me know. I'll do more of it. If you think I'm insane, let me know that too. And maybe I'll curtail it.
And if you play Red Dead Redemption 2, let me know what you think of it, because I'm, I'm very much considering getting it. Not for Christmas, though. Probably not till the summer after, you know, I don't know, or the spring or something. But not for Christmas. We've got enough for Christmas as far as video games go. So, all right. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you for tuning in to my lovely stream of consciousness craziness. And I will be around again soon. Later, Gators. Bye.